spirits soar, hearts race, and imaginations run wild. Nobody puts fun into action. Nobody turns vacations into adventures. Nobody brings the motion pictures to life. Nobody like Universal Studios Florida, where the world rides the movies. But the excitement has just begun. Now this was a trailer released in 1998 promoting the then nearly complete Islands of Adventure theme park. An expansion that made Universal Orlando a full-fledged vacation destination and cemented them as someone to look out for in the theme park arena. Universal was about to enter the next stage of their evolution, with a park that would completely change the landscape and bring them to the next level. And I feel like right now we're at a similar crossroads. 2023, while it brought us a few major expansions like Super Nintendo World and Universal Studios Hollywood and Minion Land in Universal Studios Florida, was a year of promise and potential for the company. And moving into 2024, it seems like announcements of major additions keep coming at an extremely quick pace. It's gotten to the point where many are dubbing this period of growth the Universal Decade, citing these upcoming expansions as things that will change the theme park world forever. So in this video, I wanted to talk about these big expansions, why they could be important for the direction of the parks, and how they contribute to a very exciting future for Universal in general. Now, when it comes to announcements, I'd say there are three tiers when it comes to size and scale. You have additions to current parks, something Universal has been doing pretty consistently, especially within the past decade. You have brand new mini parks located in states outside of Florida and California and themed to a more specific aspect of the Universal brand. And then you have the brand new state-of-the-art theme park, everyone's favorite, Epic Universe. Starting with the smaller of the announcements first, let's talk about new additions coming to the pre-existing parks. As far as Universal Orlando is concerned, the main active development is the new reimagining of the Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone area in the back of the park. DreamWorks Land, as it's called, is set to feature old and new characters from the studio's lineup in an area that functions a lot like its predecessor, acting as a highly themed set of play areas and smaller attractions directed towards little children. While specific details confirmed by Universal themselves are pretty sparse, construction is well underway with this land set to open later in 2024. And I feel like even though this area isn't set to get any huge attractions, I feel like smaller factors will make Make it a successful addition. For one, the area of the park that this is taking over was in desperate need of something fresh, something new. While Kid Zone has its place in the nostalgia of many Universal fans that grew up in the early 2000s, it was basically just sitting there waiting to be demolished for many, many years. So even though this isn't something that's going to be on a super grand scale, just a fresh coat of paint in this area, some new additions are just generally going to be a welcome sight. That plus the success of Minion Land, which kind of functioned the same purpose, taking an area of the park that was kind of a grab bag of attractions and centering it on one theme, while also providing entertainment for kids and adults, might be used to map out the success of DreamWorks Land. They share a lot of similarities, and I personally really, really enjoy what they did with Minion Land, both with the new attraction and the new dining and character experiences. I also think that the franchises selected for this area will play into this idea too, as you have properties like Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, and Trolls incorporated here that have fans of varying age groups. Things like Trolls and Gabby's Dollhouse might cater more to the younger crowd, while Shrek and Kung Fu Panda will hit the nostalgia button for an older crowd. Again, while this land isn't likely to change the trajectory of the park it's in, I feel that it's coming at the perfect time to bring a fresh spin on an area that desperately needed an update. Now for something a bit more thrilling, let's jump over to Universal Studios Hollywood, where construction has recently begun on the park's first major roller coaster, themed to the Fast and Furious franchise. While the park technically has two coasters in the Dark Ride Hybrid Revenge of the Mummy and Magical Kitty Coaster Flight of the Hippogriff, the park's spatial constraints due to the active film studio had restricted it from boasting coasters comparable to the parks in Orlando. 
Pair that with the dismal response to the previous standalone attraction based on the franchise here in Orlando, and it seems as if Universal is looking to give the family the roller coaster they've always deserved. Now, when I say construction has begun, it's really in the land clearing and initial structure phase with little actually confirmed besides the theme, so there isn't a whole lot of specific details we can really lean on. However, with rumors of spinning ride vehicles and a thrill level similar to Velocicoaster here in IOA, there's a lot to look forward to. And that's also because this is a very historic first of its kind attraction in more ways than one. Like I said before, it is the first major coaster coming to this park, but it's also taking over the space used by historic buildings like the former Castle Theater, now Special Effects Stage, and Animal Actors, both of which were used for decades prior to this. That, plus the meticulous planning needed to go into this development as to not disturb the filming spaces below, tells me that they're planning on doing this attraction right bringing Universal Studios Hollywood into the new era with something innovative in order to justify these big changes. Both of these expansions, while perhaps not as immediately game-changing as the two big park expansions in 2023, continue Universal's track record of adding new and exciting attractions to the current parks, plussing them up in ways that they really need, whether that be by adding kid-specific entertainment in Orlando or a big thrill ride in Hollywood. Moving away from expansions to existing parks, let's talk about our next category, which are brand new mini parks. The first of these is another project focusing on families, the Universal Kids Resort in Frisco, Texas. This park and its surrounding resort is likely set to feature different animated franchises we've already talked about, such as DreamWorks and Illumination. But there's also the likelihood of featuring some that don't have as much presence in the pre-existing parks, like Jurassic World, Camp Cretaceous, the animated spin-off of the Jurassic Park series, and perhaps even SpongeBob SquarePants, which would be a big draw if it truly does come to fruition. Based on the most recent piece of concept art, which is really all we have at this point, it seems like this park is really going to focus on smaller attractions, such as flat rides, small water rides, and kiddie coasters based on these franchises. They aren't as far along as things like the Fast and Furious Coaster or DreamWorks expansion, but they are currently in the land clearing stage of construction. And this park is set at about 32 acres, so quite a bit smaller than the current Universal Parks we have open right now. While that may sound like a bad thing being so much smaller than the current parks, the point isn't to replicate the scale of the current parks. It is to provide a smaller, more intimate experience for families. So with that being said, while I can say this isn't truly a park made for me, it is being made with a specific demographic in mind. See, for so long, Universal was pretty much known as a place for older kids, teenagers, and adults, with rides and entertainment centering more around thrill than anything else. However, with expansions like Minion Land, Super Nintendo World, and even DreamWorks, Universal has been trying to create a more friendly space for younger kids and their families. And I feel that this is most exemplified through the addition of this kids' resort. From the emphasis on animated franchises to less intense looking attractions, it seems like Universal is looking to fill that void with their kids' themed resort. However, Universal knows their audience, and knows many of their biggest fans are thrill seekers, looking for experiences that will get the adrenaline pumping. One of the ways Universal does this is with thrill rides, as I previously mentioned, but another way is through their infamous haunted attractions at Halloween Horror Nights. And the next project is one of the ones I am most excited and curious about, a year-round horror experience coming to Las Vegas, Nevada, titled Universal Horror Unleashed. Now, this project was revealed about a year ago in a joint announcement with Universal Kids, and I have a video breaking down in more detail the specific contents of that announcement, so go check that out if you haven't, because not much has changed since then. However, construction is a lot farther along for this than a few of the other projects, with walls for the main warehouse structure up as of January 2024. And the space occupied by Universal Horror Unleashed is about 110,000 square feet, and when you measure soundstage 23 and 24, probably the biggest house locations that are found at Universal Studios Florida at least, those both sit at 18,000 square feet each and can hold 
two sizable haunted houses, so they have a lot of room to play with with Horror Unleashed. If you're at all familiar with the channel, you'll know why this is so exciting for me. But really, any expansion on HHN is very exciting, as in the case of both coasts, the detail and theming when it comes to haunted houses keeps going up as the event gets more popular. Mix that with the potential for original storytelling and adaptation of beloved IPs like the Universal Classic Monsters, Blumhouse, etc., and you have something that should intrigue any big fan of HHN, which Universal has a lot of. Like Universal Kids, there's a desire to expand into a new state, showing their faith in the demand for this project. And also, when it comes to Horror Unleashed, there is a direct partnership with Area 15, a third party who is known for their truly immersive themed entertainment. Over the years, Universal has grown to treat HHN with a lot of care, keeping a pretty firm grip on how that side of the parks is managed. However, with the incorporation of Area 15, there seems to be a desire to loosen that grip in order to create something truly special. And that's what I can really say about both of these projects. There's quite a bit of risk in creating these more bite-sized Universal experiences outside of the direct influence of Orlando and Hollywood. However, when it comes to both the families and the horror fans, Universal seems to understand their demand for more, and is truly capitalizing on that at this moment. But now we come to the big one, the park that's at the forefront of everyone's mind when it comes to Universal, and the one that really kicked off this whole period of expansion for them, Epic Universe. Now, if you're familiar with Universal, or just theme parks in general, you already likely know a lot about Epic Universe. Set to open in summer of 2025, Epic Universe is not only built to feature huge franchises like Nintendo and the Wizarding World, but doing so through attractions that are the first of their kind, especially for Universal. From a proposed Ministry of Magic Dark ride that seems like Universal's answer to Rise of the Resistance, to a Donkey Kong themed roller coaster that uses clever tricks to defy the eye, there's so much to be excited for when just looking at the attractions likely to make their way to Epic Universe. And these attractions all fit into their own highly themed lands that exist as detailed pieces in a complete celestial experience. I'd be a broken record if I described all the ways Epic Universe is going to change things on a micro scale, especially when it comes to Universal. However, there is one big factor that I think is most important when considering the impact of Epic Universe and what I think it could do for the brand as a whole. Looking back to Islands of Adventure again, that park originally started as a way to directly beat Disney at their own game. Without getting too bogged down in the history, mostly because that's an upcoming video, Universal set to create a world that blended exciting animated properties with groundbreaking attractions and themed lands. Even going so far as to borrow the hub and spoke design most associated with Disneyland style parks. With Universal's second park in Florida, they weren't trying to create another place where you can ride the movies, they were trying to create their own Disneyland. And while that didn't end up coming into fruition, mostly due to a dependency on Warner Brothers, a third party, it seems as if Epic Universe is the next evolution of that concept. However, this time they have the design and budget capabilities in-house. And as someone who doesn't hate Disney or their parks at all, that's not what this is, it's exciting to see something with the scale of a full-fledged Disney park coming from Universal. Hence why so many Disney fans have really begun to look in Universal's direction over the past few years, as Epic Universe has been under construction. Over the past decade, and with the success of things like the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Universal has been gaining the platform to create amazing achievements in the theme park world, and building their library of beloved properties in the process. I mean, I say the past decade, but really Islands of Adventure was the genesis of this idea, blending really high quality theming with innovation when it comes to ride technology, and they've only been getting better with it ever since then. So with Epic Universe, it seems like the cap has been popped, and Universal is putting financial investment and creative effort into expanding what they're known for, while also putting their own signature spin on new concepts. That's why I feel that Epic Universe is the truth synthesis of everything we've talked about up to this point. 
you have the simultaneous focus on thrills with the park's many coasters, and accessibility with dark rides, smaller attractions, and general entertainment and theming. And they're doing so with a blend of IP properties which initially seems like a strange assortment until you realize that it checks every box. You want a beloved animated franchise that appeals to both kids and adults? How to Train Your Dragon. You want quite possibly the most recognizable and long-lasting video game franchise ever created at the park? Nintendo is waiting for you. You want more of that signature theme park magic only the Wizarding World can provide? You're in luck, we have Harry Potter here too. Or maybe you want something spooky that pays homage to the past century of the studio's history? Well, Epic Universe has you covered with those fan-favorite creatures of the night. My point in all of this is that this park, for as much as we may know about it permit-wise or construction-wise or what have you, is something with the potential to truly surprise us in more ways than one. So now if you've made it this far, you may think I'm blowing smoke up Universal's behind, saying how great everything is going to be. However, I wouldn't be lying if I said all this possibility has also created a bit of concern in some places. Now let me be clear, I am excited about all of these additions. Some have me a bit more curious than others if I'm being honest, but I generally appreciate Universal taking these risks and trying a lot of these things out. However, I guess my worry boils down to Universal biting off more than they can chew with all this stuff. As much as a year-round HHN haunt experience excites me and I feel like they could really deliver something special, I question if it will be successful on the level they're imagining it to be, especially with all the money and effort that's being put in. The same goes for the kids resort. I think they'll definitely find some audience, but will it make the splash that they might be hoping for? Will these additions and the cost of them result in ticket prices and hotel rates that go beyond their model of being more financially accessible than Disney? We're at the stage where there is a lot of hype for sure, but also just as many questions that won't be answered until we see what actually plays out. However, something I noticed from Universal that is most admirable at this point is transparency. Now while that doesn't necessarily translate to them telling us everything about their new projects, they're notorious for not doing that, there's an effort to adopt guest feedback into their plan for future expansion. A lot of people got sick of purely screen-based simulator rides during the 2010s giving the brand the image of low-quality attractions. And with things like Hagrid's, Velocicoaster, and Secret Life of Pets off the leash, it seems like Universal responded to that by creating many new attractions pretty much devoid of screen simulator technology. That's just one example, but right now Universal seems to listen, and that's really important from a brand perspective. Even if they're not listening to me specifically, it feels like they actually care about the people that come to the parks and what they want to see. And that's something really important that I hope they just hold on to. I hope they remain accessible into the future. The Universal Parks have a very interesting few years ahead of them, and I think they have built themselves up as bringing something truly special to the table. So let's hope that all of this buildup, all of this plotting and planning and growing translates into something truly unforgettable and truly epic. Okay, that last little bit was kind of cheesy, but what do you think? This is a different kind of video for me, but I really wanted to open up a dialogue about this because I have a lot of opinions, so please let me know in the comments below. How do you feel about the Universal Decade, the new expansions, additions to current parks, brand new parks, stuff I didn't really even talk about in this video, like the potential for Pokemon, Zelda, Universal Britain, things like that that I want to talk about more in the future when we get more information. I think there are so many interesting perspectives on this matter, so I want to open up the floor to hear about them and talk about them, as long as we're civil about it, of course. But other than that, I want to thank you for watching this video, and if you're new here, I make videos all about theme park history, current events, and things coming up. So if you're interested in that, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It would be truly appreciated. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers, so I just want to thank you all for being so supportive. And I say I appreciate it all the time, but I really do. Anyways, this video is running a little bit long. That's all I got. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you, of course, in the next one. Take care, everybody.